segment of Inside Space Flight, celebrating Air Force Week 2010, hosted by Patrick Air Force Base in Florida. In this segment, we will get on board an HH-60 Pavehawk helicopter with the 920th Rescue Group and do a flyover of Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and Kennedy Space Center. We begin with a flyover of one of the 920th rescue groups, C-130s. Some of the media decided to fly on the aircraft instead of the helicopters. And here we see the C-130 landing at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station skid strip. Those are the two Delta launch pad towers in the background. And here come the Pavehawk helicopters. You see the control tower for the skid strip and here comes the first of the helicopters coming in for a landing on the tarmac at the end of the skid strip. Those helicopters are loud and they make a lot of wind when you walk when you walk up to the door and you walk under those rotors it gets very windy and very loud. The one that just landed is the one I flew on during media day activities. The 920th Rescue Group uses these helicopters on launch day. You may have seen them if you've ever been to a space shuttle launch or watched a unmanned rocket. They use these helicopters to keep the ocean downrange clear of any boats, uh, stray fishing boats and the like. And these helicopters would also be used in case of an emergency rescue operation if, for example, the space shuttle had to ditch in the ocean or the crew had to bail out or something like that. The 920th Rescue Group has an assortment of, I should say, 920th Rescue Wing because they are one of the Air Force's three rescue wings. And they have a, a variety of aircraft and, and helicopters and, and assets at their disposal. The 920th uh, has also been deployed overseas, recently in Afghanistan, uh, several times. If, uh, if any of you recall the, the story of the Navy SEAL Marcus Luttrell, who got in a firefight with hundreds of, of uh, Al-Qaeda and Taliban in Afghanistan several years ago, and every member of his team was, was killed except for him. And, in fact, there was a rescue mission mounted to try to uh, extract him from Afghanistan from the battlefield and uh, the rescue team uh, went down as well. Eventually Marcus Luttrell was rescued and it was the 920th rescue group who are uh, rescuing who who uh, who performed the extraction so they are definitely unsung heroes and here you see I'm riding along the helicopter now and we're doing a short taxi down the runway and then we will take off and get airborne it's very different from a plane the a plane does that swooping takeoff and a helicopter just pretty much lifts off the ground they get a little forward motion first uh, that helps with control and stability and the like I guess and here we go And there's the end of the skid strip. Much narrower and shorter than the uh, than the shuttle runway at Kennedy Space Center. And here we see some of the Cape Canaveral facilities. This building there in the in the distance that is a new spacecraft processing facility being built by the National Reconnaissance Office. They will be able to securely process spacecraft, spy satellites, and the like. 
within the confines of Cape Canaveral security and it will also serve as a uh, safe haven in case of hurricanes. And here we go flying over the middle of Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and looking out the other side and one of my colleagues we see some of the facilities in the distance, some of the old Titan facilities. And there are the two Delta launch pads. See the gray Delta rocket service towers, that's for the Delta II. That's the old Vanguard launch complex and the Minuteman launch complex. And we continue, there's a controlled burn and Coming up right about now, there's the Cape Canaveral Lighthouse, famous landmark. And more uh, old launch complexes, those are for the SNARK and, and MACE winged missiles. And we just saw a brief glimpse of the old Atlas Centaur launch pad. Here's the Navy's Trident ground-based and Space Florida's Launch Complex 46. And now we're beginning to fly out over the water and doing a nice little turn up the coast. It's a very, very beautiful view up there. And looking down, here are some of the old abandoned launch complexes for the Atlas and Titan missiles. These are the old Atlas ICBM launch pads that we're flying over right now. You can tell by the sloping ramp and the shape of the road, the perimeter road, kind of a teardrop shape. And this is the first of the Titan launch complexes, the Titan 1 and Titan 2 ICBMs. You can tell they haven't been used in a very long time. We go complex 15, 16, complex 19, which is the old Gemini launch pad. I believe that's what we're flying over right now. The in Cape Industrial Area is there in the background with all the hangars and offices and headquarters. This, I believe, is Complex 20, used for Titan, Pershing Missile, Sounding Rockets, and Space Florida several years ago. And we continue flying up the coast. You can see the beach there. There's another... Um, that is the Saturn I Apollo launch complex. You see the launch pedal still there in the middle of the circle. That is the site of the Apollo 1 fire in which Grissom, White, and Chafee gave their lives in sacrifice for the exploration of space. And finally we get to an active launch complex. This is Space Launch Complex 37, the Delta IV launch complex. Inside that white tower right now is a Delta IV heavy rocket being prepared for launch in November. That used to be another Saturn I launch complex for the Saturn 1B rocket back in the 1960s. And now we continue flying up. We're going to zoom here. Those are old facilities for the Titan now used by United Launch Alliance for the Atlas V rocket, I do believe. Actually, that's the Trident Turn Basin, I think. It was hard to tell. Very shaky on the, on the helicopter. It's a very smooth ride, but, but it vibrates a lot, so it's very hard to um, keep a camera still. Still interesting nonetheless. Now we're sort of turning inland over northern Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. There is the Atlas V launch complex. See the vertical integration facility and the pad with the four lightning towers. The Atlas rocket rolls out vertically from that white building over to the launch pad the day before launch. And there is the shuttle launch pad and the Ares-1 launch pad. Discovery is on the shuttle launch pad to the right, right there. And in the back with the three lightning towers, there's Discovery. You can see the top of the external tank and a solid rocket booster. Be nice to be up here during a launch. 
would be the best view in the house. And the other pad with the three lightning towers, that is a former shuttle launch pad and where Ares 1X was launched. And now it is being torn down and cleaned up and refurbished for some as yet unknown rocket to fly from in the future. And here we are looking at the Atlas V launch pad again. You can see just how marshy and swampy Cape Canaveral and Kennedy Space Center area actually is. It's one reason it makes for a great wildlife refuge. This is also the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. There's a beautiful view from up there. We're about 500 feet off the ground. There's the Ares 1 and former shuttle launch pad. Again, the launch towers are being torn down. The lightning rods will be left. And here's one of my favorite sites. The Paypog helicopter with the space shuttle Discovery in the background. And the beautiful foliage of central Florida beneath. pilots did a fantastic job guiding us around and here's something very very exciting the vehicle assembly building the door open you can see that they're actually stacking a couple solid rocket boosters for STS-134 right now and there's the new mobile launcher almost completed it was destined to be used for the Ares-1 rocket but now it will be used for that as yet unknown vehicle and we continue our aerial tour of Kennedy Space Center with the shuttle launch pad there in the background. Can't get enough of it. The Atlantic Ocean farther off in the distance. You really get a, an idea of the scope and the scale of operations involved in flying the shuttle and these other, these other rockets when you're in the air and you can just see how much area and space the facilities take up and and how many buildings and tanks and towers and everything else are out there it was truly a treat to be able to get the invite and to be able to fly with the 920th I will do it any time they in, invite me back Here's sort of the skyline of Kennedy Space Center, at least the, the launch pad area. We're going to fly to the north of Launch Complex 39B. Again, Ares 1X and space shuttles launched from there. And it is being dismantled, but it is not being destroyed. It is merely going to be refurbished for future launches, and who knows, the first manned flight to Mars may blast off from that launch pad in another 10, 20, 30 years. It's kind of a hazy day, but not too bad. Out there you see the gray blurry launch towers in the distance and buildings. We're looking now toward the south across Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral. We're flying back out toward the ocean. There's the beach below us. One of the best fishing spots that you'll never get to use. In the wide expanse of the Atlantic. And now we're beginning to turn back west. This is the inside of the, the Pave Hawk. And that is the handle that, if you're a passenger, you don't want to pull. That is a handle that I do believe you pull and it releases the equipment to uh, let you jump out of the helicopter, which I really didn't want to do. I followed one bit of advice on the, on the chopper, and that was don't touch anything. 